and a creator will always be able to start new things well because they have their head in the clouds. The Wealth Dynamics Profile is based, first of all, on an equation. And the equation is that wealth equals value multiplied by leverage. If wealth is value times leverage, what the Chinese would say is that there are opposites to everything. So there are opposites to how we create value, there's opposites to how we create leverage. The base of the Wealth Dynamics Square, which are eight profiles of how to create wealth, are based on which is your most natural opposite or polarity of how you create value and also how you leverage. So the Wealth Dynamics Square is based on the fact that we have two different thinking dynamics. So there's a top of the square, there's a bottom of the square. Those at the top of the square are the ones who have a much higher intuitive thinking, which is a bit like saying you have your head in the clouds. So if you have your head in the clouds, you're always very good at creating value through something called innovation, which is something smaller, quicker, faster, bigger. The center at the top is someone called a creator. So someone like uh, Bill Gates, someone like Thomas Edison, Walt Disney, Steve Jobs, very good at starting things, very good at creating. In fact, the top entrepreneur will say that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to run the business, I'm not going to do all the detail, others can do that for me, but I'm going to create. And a creator will always be able to start new things well because they have their head in the clouds. From the creator who's at the top, you can have the opposite at the bottom who's someone called a trader, who doesn't have their head in the clouds, they have their ear to the ground. The opposite of intuitive thinking is sensory thinking, which is not someone who creates value through innovation, it's someone who creates value through timing. So someone, a trader like George Soros, will make all his money by being able to really spot the right timing, and he will not have perception, which is depth of vision. He will have, he won't have perspective, depth of vision, he'll have perception, which is breadth of vision. So he'll be able to see all the detail, whereas the person at the top sees the bigger picture. When you've got these two here, you then find that there's a cycle which takes them into something which is called extrovert action dynamic and introvert action dynamic, which is how we create our leverage. If you were to think that the ones at the top are using their frontal brain more or their frontal lobe as opposed to their temporal lobe, you've also got left brain or right brain. And so you'll find that, for example, the creative people at the top who are more right brain, which is more extrovert, are the ones who are called stars. And a star profile with someone, let's say, for example, like Oprah Winfrey, uh, someone like Tiger Woods, someone who's actually creating brand instead of creating product. What's really useful to know about that is that if you're a star profile like Oprah Winfrey, she's far better at promoting other people's products than trying to promote her own products. So uh, Martha Stewart's another example of a great star. Arnold Schwarzenegger's a star. These are people who make all the money from their brand value by promoting other people's products. And they'll look for the best people with the best products to be able to build their value. Uh, the one down from a star profile is someone who now is not as creative, but someone who's still very extrovert, who's called, called a supporter profile. Someone like Jack Welsh. He's a leader, someone like Rudy Giuliani. Steve Ballmer is the CEO of Microsoft. They all have the same traits and the same winning formulas of leadership, which is leading through people, through someone else's uh, creation or someone else's business. So Steve Ballmer can be worth $14 billion by supporting Bill Gates, but what he's doing is he's saying, I don't have to be creative because I'm much better actually leading the people and that's how I'm gonna make my money and I won't get involved in other, any other aspect in any other way. Uh, the person who's still creative but now good with timing, so as a result, there's someone who's good at timing through people, is someone called a deal maker. So let's say Rupert Murdoch uh, or Donald Trump is someone who's known for the deals that they make. You know, you never see Rupert Murdoch showing up in the news because he's just showing his latest iPhone or he's just showing his latest, his latest uh, Google product or anything like that. He's showing up in the news because of his latest deal. And you can actually see he gets all of his news as a result of that. He's got a deal-making team, as opposed to Bill Gates, who's got a creative team. And then from the deal-maker, you have the trader. And from trader, you then have the accumulator. And we're seeing many accumulators making a lot of money right now, because there's actually seasons to this. There's a spring, there's a summer, there's an autumn. And we're actually going to winter energy right now with many of the economies around the world. So one example of a great accumulator is someone called Warren Buffett, now the richest man in the world. Second example, second richest man in the world is Carlos Slim from Mexico. These are accumulators who are very cautious with how they spend their money. They're not just going to buy and sell like a trader, but they will collect over time at the right time. Uh, it's very interesting because this idea that what we say no to is what defines our wealth. Warren Buffett has been criticized many times when there's been trading cycles and people are saying, why is he not speculating more? Why is the dot-coms making so much money and he's not even getting involved? He'll say, I will not get involved in that. I'll wait for the right time.
he will invest five years of his time waiting for the right time, and that's how he continues to sustain his wealth. And then from there, you then move up to the next person, also making a lot of money now, called a Lord Profile, like a landlord. It doesn't have to be that good at timing. Someone like Rockefeller didn't have to actually even own an oil field and take the risk of it, or even trade oil to make a billion dollars from oil as a refiner in the middle. Larry Page from Google is also, someone like Lakshmi Mittal, now the richest man in England, is a Lord Profile, because he's so good at analyzing. When uh, Lakshmi Mittal uh, took over Archula, Archula Steel, at that point, there were people who were saying, why isn't he out there trying to smooth more as a deal maker and all these kind of things, when in fact, all he did was just keep calculating a better deal, keep calculating and coming forward with the numbers. So at the end, they had to go with the deal. And then you then have the final one who's the mechanic, back to being creative again, but now on the introvert side, and a mechanic is someone who's very good at systems. So for example, Ray Kroc didn't have to create McDonald's, but he could perfect it. So this is not someone who's good at starting things, but they're very good at finishing things. Uh, let's say, for example, someone like Jeff Bezos at Amazon.com. He has such a good system that he can actually take anyone's product and make more money. Sam Walton from Walmart, again, he has such a good system, he doesn't have to create the product or he doesn't have to create the brand. Those will come his way by focusing at one thing and one thing well, which is a system. Mm -hmm.